welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. As always, we are looking at 11 games here, Nate, on February the 10th, Friday, to end your work week. We are going to be bringing you a couple vid- game videos and our player props as we're bringing you each and every weekday. So like and subscribe to that page. And this one, we're taking a look at the 76ers playing host to the New York Knicks. Also, I want you to head to thelines.com. That's where you can check out all of the great written content we have for you guys and use that odds finder tool out there. Make sure you're getting all the best odds available to you guys across these U.S. Sports books this season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into this 11 game slate and then talk about our game 76ers and Knicks. Yeah, it's the day after the trade deadline, so it's going to be a bit of a mess, uh, you know, searching through who's actually going to play, who, who got to town, who cleared a physical. Uh, but we think the games we highlighted, we at least have a good idea here. Spurs at Pistons, nobody really cares about that one. Plus three, or is it San Antonio? Then we break down Knicks plus five and a half at Philly. Total of 229. Suns with all those guys, um, you know, shipped out. I mean, Durant's not playing until after the All-Star break, and they're plus one on a back-to-back in Indiana. Hornets plus 11 at Boston. Celtics listing a number of guys is questionable, though. Jazz plus seven and a half at the Raptors. Uh, Wolves are plus nine at Memphis. That game, to me, really hinges on whether Rudy Gobert is going to play. It seems like he should. Rockets plus 10 at the Heat, who have a ton of guys questionable. Luka is questionable for the Mavs. Could see the first Luka Kyrie uh, tandem, and they're plus two at Kings. And then the other game we break down, Thunder plus four at Portland. Total of 242 out there. A 229 total for this matchup. Uh, I I imagine that's going to be bet down uh, as we record this here on Thursday night. I can't imagine people are at all interested in the over after seeing the way these teams played each other last time out after the pace at which they've both been playing at. In fact, both their games were played, their their previous games, at an 88 pace. Boston and Philly just dragging one out. The Sixers only allowed 10 free throw attempts, which I didn't even know was possible in a competitive game in the NBA anymore. But they, they, you know, they held Boston in check and – their Embiid and their offense was not able to explode dis- despite Luke Cornett being out there for most of the game as the Celtics missing their centers. Uh, but the Knicks have really gotten back to playing that that Tibbs drawn out style after, you know, surprisingly a lot of shootouts. I mean, that one with Brooklyn, overtime with Lakers. Since then, three and one to the under in their last four, pace under 92. And where they're scoring is a bit of a concern. I mean, not in the paint. Uh, no Mitchell Robinson still here. And the fifth highest percentage of their points are off threes. And, and Philly is actually an elite three-point defense this year uh, in general uh, and, and limiting them very well at home. I mean, the, the lineups both these teams are going to throw out here, it's kind of mirror images, uh, right? It's Jalen and Julius pick and roll. It's Harden and Embiid pick and roll. And then two, three and D guys in the corner. Uh, I mean, whether, whether that's their skill set or not, that's what they're relegated to like quickly just sitting there with a tiny usage rate, uh, Jericho Sims. And, and then you got PJ Tucker with his 3% usage rate out there for the Sixers. And there's just a lot of ways that the offense can sputter, even if Embiid and Harden continue to put up their, their 35 and 20 and, and do their thing. Um, it's just hard to imagine the entire team lighting it up. I mean, Maxi has really cooled off off the bench, and maybe it's some of that's the matchup, right? I mean, playing Orlando twice, but this is what Philly does in division games like this because there are so many black and blue games in the Atlantic. Since 2021, I mean, they're going under at a, about a 60% clip in the division, 60% clip when they have a rest disadvantage too. And I think that's the bigger thing here that makes me lean both Knicks and under, um, I, I like the under more than the spread. Let me be clear there. But Knicks having two days off here uh, versus the Sixers playing one of those hard no, hard knocker games against against the Celtics, and just being in a bit of a rut since Embiid Embiid's MVP showcase there against the Nuggets. Their last five, their offense has just been very ho hum, uh, highly dependent on free throws. And while the Knicks are giving up a lot of free throws lately, I think they can limit that. And I think the Sixers can limit what the Knicks have been in trying to do in terms of get it going from beyond the arc. So I don't think we'll see a lot of points here just like five days ago when these teams met. 
<clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair to to the numbers that that draw your eye about them being slow and sluggish on offense in the last five for the 76ers, two of them came against the Magic. Uh, one was against those Knicks to help our point here. <clears throat> and then th- that Celtics game that we thought might have a few more points, uh, maybe we should just listen to the Sixers and when they tell us that when they play Eastern Conference teams uh, to this capacity, they're going to go under. Uh, they they had that over versus the Nets. Uh, that was like a, a Saturday night game. They ended up, I think, in overtime and having like 270 points in that game. Uh, but it was expected to go 224 and a half. There was a couple guys missing. So w- when Embiid is in and the offense is give him the ball. It's a pick and roll, but like 70% of the time that you roll with him and he's rolling, give him the ball. Uh, that That is the offense, and James Harden has conceded it since the beginning of the season. Good on him, to be honest. Um, and, and when it is that style of play, and the Knicks have shown, to your point, they're down to sort of keep one guy on Embiid and then one guy with an eye on him, but never just collapse with a double team because they're happy to keep the shooters off of him. They know that Embiid is going to tire. They're happy to let him have like 20 points at halftime and be, you know, the one shooting the ball 17 times in the first half, et cetera. Like, that's fine. And the thing they can't do is give up 19 free throws like they did last game, which still didn't kill them because James Harden, who usually averages close to 25 against them uh, since he's joined the 76ers, only had 12 points in that game going 0 for 4 from 3. Uh, and the Knicks really brought it in the second half in that one. So, you know, take what you will from that one. There was no R.J. Barrett either. Um, not that I really think that that has a huge impact. I think, he'll, you know, he'll be fine in this game uh, and, and and his normal impact. Uh, but the point being, like, he's not really impacting necessarily the, the amount of points that they're scoring and it does just feel like you said because of the, the slow pace that they're playing at uh both these teams i mean the knicks slowest pace like you said back to their ways slowest pace over the course of uh well pretty much the season uh but the last five on the road playing at that 93.94 pace is really in- interesting especially because they're playing they're so bad on defense right now with that 125 defensive rating uh in those games but you look at who they were playing on the road i mean they did keep the uh the magic to under 100 points then they played a Nets team who went off a Celtics team, you know, in Boston, we know what they do. Uh, and then the Raptors just own them and a Hawks team. So like all these teams are these super fast paced, not rely on big men to score for them or be the focal point of their offense. Everything comes from the wing. And that's just not the style that the, you know, the, the 76ers play the magic same way. They, they, it's not like they're going like guard, guard, guard. They're going big man, heavy, a lot of mid range, um, but a lot of big guys shooting over other people, hopefully as close to the room as possible. Same as the Knicks essentially, right? Like Julius Randall, even Jalen Brunson wants to get inside and do his work in there and if Embiid's standing there then that's just not an option for him at that point uh nearly as much as it would be so um I I think they just both these teams know each other you know Tibbs knows exactly how to do uh, what he needs to do to to slow down this offense uh and this defense you know they they really I think there's a little brother syndrome for them with the Knicks like they've owned them for seasons they've been atop the division well above them for for seasons and seasons um and so they're you know that continues to be the way that when Embiid plays them they know that he's always far and away the best player on the court uh, and and the, the game goes through him. It slows it down. The Knicks have been limiting free throws a little bit better just to finish it all. Ninth best on the road in their last like 10 road games uh, in terms of limiting the opponent free throws, um, but also getting to the line only 20 times a game themselves, uh, which keeps the game from, you know, slowing down too much, but neither of them are trying to fast break. So you can just depend on everything just being slow, half pace, uh, half court offense, uh, keep this game to under 230 for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. The Knicks don't exploit what Philly's biggest weakness is, which is transition. Uh, they're at the bottom six, fast break points, points off turnover over the last couple of weeks. And yeah, if it's if it's going to be a half court game, I think both are comfortable because they're playing through Brunson the way they're playing through Harden on the other end. Um, but yeah, big brother, little brother. It, recently in these spots, I've been leaning towards yeah. the Knicks uh, because yeah, they're 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 no longer they're they're seeing that number with that how bad they are against teams above five hundred and starting to respond. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Philly just kind of in the funk in, in a long letdown here again since it, since they got so up for that Nuggets game. It, the the not the, I mentioned the numbers against the uh, total. Uh, when they're on a rest disadvantage or when they're in these divisions games, it's the same thing against the spread for them too. Uh, you know, so we're right on the right on the average margin of victory for them in this spot at five points per game. I would lean towards Knicks um, and the under, and maybe yeah, it is an opportunity to tease it because plus nine and a half. As long as the Knicks are are competitive, um, I don't so even by losing by too much more than that in Philly. I mean. 
yeah, a lot of these road results, they're, they're far and away, you know, they're they, on the West coast or whatever, but a, a Knicks Philly game is really just like almost across town. Sometimes. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. It's a four hour bus ride. Not that I'm sure they're taking one, but if you did want to, uh, to look that up, but yeah, <laughs> four hour bus, 90 minute train, 90 right? minute train, right? Yeah, exactly. You just got too much traffic on 80 over there. Uh, but either way, enough about the traffic in the Northeast. That's all the time we have for you in this one. Make sure to like, and subscribe to that page, continue to follow along. Got a couple other videos up for you today as we do each and every weekday. And until we see you next, happy betting.